Okay, we're back. We're live for the 1 o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. With me is Cheryl Lynch. She's the branch manager of the branch of the Hawaii Library in Waianae. And I have been meaning to have her on the show for a long time because I have admired her for a long time because she sends me mail all the time. She tells me about what's going on in Waianae, in the library, and I'm always impressed. Welcome to the show, Cheryl. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate this opportunity. So tell us, what makes the Waianae branch of the library system different from all the other branches? Well, the Hawaii State Public Library System is the only statewide library system, and we have 51 branches across six 51, islands. 51, wow. 51, and the state library, that makes it 52. And we, uh, at Waianae, we have some interesting things besides um, some unique programming. We also have a very large collection of Hawaiian quilt patterns. Really? Yes, and people can come in. One trace. would hardly expect that. That's not in the classical library, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> and we have people from all over the world come. And we had a group of ladies from Japan came. They traced the patterns. They went back. They made the quilt. And they brought it back and gave it to us. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Angel trumpet quilt. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, so you have an exhibit room. In well, the library? How do, you, how do you exhibit these things? Well, we are lucky enough to have a really nice meeting room uh, where pe that people can rent. And in our meeting room, we have a very large quilt made by one of our quilt patterns in 1990 was donated to us. And then we have in a glass case until we can get into a nice plastic sheet, uh, the new one from the Japanese uh, quilters. Mm -hmm. And that's in a glass case. But when people rent the meeting room... Sure. Well, that's it's actually being used in the sense that it's in the meeting room. Mm -hmm. People in the meeting will look at it, yes. you know. So it's sort of made to order uh, for 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 connection. You know? Yes. And speaking of connection, it sounds to me like Waianae Branch is particularly sensitive and connected with the Native Hawaiian community out there. Hence the quilts. No. Well, um, we try to be connected to all the people that live on the Waianae Coast, and we are lucky enough that we had the quilt patterns donated, but we have something new that's happening. We have a community court out at the library. I don't know if you'd seen that advertised lately. And the judiciary comes out, rents our meeting room, just like everybody else. They rent it for two days because mm -hmm. it's a lot of setup. And we have court out there in our meeting room, which is really awesome. And and that it's real court. It's real court. Yeah. Real decisions. Real judges. Yes, and <laughs> and right. Uh, if you see a picture of the judge, she's the quilts behind her, so it looks <laughs> really good. People can't miss that. It's at Y and I. So, but what I caught in there is that you you can rent a room at the library. Oh yeah, yeah. Tell me about how that works. Oh, you, lots of libraries have uh, meeting rooms that you can rent, and you just call the branch and ask them, "Do you have a meeting room?" And if if yes, they. Um, they look through their schedule and book you, and it's pretty easy. We also have the AARP tax people. Uh, they rent, well, we let them use our meeting room, and they come in during Is tax season. Is there a season. nonprofit at all? Well, yeah, well, they're doing a, a wonderful um, service. service to our community, and they come out once a week on Wednesday and do taxes for free. And then over at our new sister branch at Nanakuli, just down the street, 5.6 miles, not far. Uh, <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> but they do the taxes there on Friday mornings. Ah. So that's in their meeting room. So That's great. That's yes. another connection with the yes. community, you know, with the, with the seniors. Mm -hmm. um, so what was your demographic like, Cheryl? I mean, are you, mm -hmm. are you dealing a lot with young people, with um, middle-aged people, uh, seniors? Oh, who comes and goes uh, from the library at Why Not? Um, well, really, zero to 100. I mean, we have babies up to 90-year-olds that come and use our computer every day, and everybody in between. We're close to the high school. We're close to the Why Not Middle School, our Why Not Intermediate School. Um, hmm. And so you're, you're actually right in the community, physically. Oh, oh in yeah, and the fire stations sort of next door. Oh, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, And the community parks right behind us. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a lot of different people. You know, we have uh, people that come and just use the computers. We have people come that will never use the computers because they're so happy we have all our books, <laughs> which we still have lots of books. And, and 
Let me think who else. We have high school kids coming in. We have student helpers that work there, and their friends come in to say hey, which is okay because it brings the kids in. Sure. And, and the middle schoolers come over after school. Yeah, it's, we have lots of people. You have to, you have to say shush to them? Um, or do you let them have a conversation? We let them have a quiet conversation, but when they get too rowdy, we ask them to go outside. You know, you can come back in after you're quiet down. Yeah. So let's talk about the computers. I, I, okay. I, I, you know, <clears throat> just the thought that if any institution, mm -hmm. especially an educational institution, wants to stay relevant, it has to keep up with um, mm -hmm. the way information is delivered. And certainly, I mean, uh, from the days of uh, the Dewey Decimal System and all that. We I still have that. that. You do? Good. Oh, yes. That's it's how our books are already right or so. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> um, you know, you got to stay relevant to, with the new information mm -hmm. systems, and they move fast. So when did you get into that, and what are you doing with it? Well, the, the Hawaii State Public Library System has had computers available to the public since I've been a librarian, and that's about 20 years. So we are... Um, we stay very current, and the, our new state librarian, Stacy Aldridge, she makes sure we stay current. Um, we have um, our computer system that the, our internet computers that the patrons can use are very up to date. We just got a brand new uh, program called SAM 10, and it allows you to put a reservation on, and um, and then if nobody's waiting. You don't have to get off your computer or get your card reset and do all this stuff. No, it just keeps adding time until the next person comes along and wants to use the computer. And then we have a new print management system where you send your print jobs to the computer and then you go over to the printer and instead of everybody rifling through all the prints that printed out, you have the security to know that you hit a code and your right, job comes and out. your job comes out so yeah. all those people that are printing their tax returns they know they're safe <laughs> and nobody very else important, is, yeah. it's very important yeah because how many people do their taxes online lots so what you're really saying is uh, you know i mean most people i know down here bishop street mm -hmm. you know they they do their computer work either in the office or at mm -hmm. home but not in the library yeah uh, there are people who don't have an office and don't mm -hmm. have a computer at home, and mm -hmm. they need a place to do their paperwork, their computer mm -hmm. research, and their computer mm -hmm. connection. Right. And you're offering that. So it's like a, 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 an office away from home. It's like the, the one place they can go and do stuff, um, you know, to, to, to connect right. with the world, to do research and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is a great benefit to people who might not otherwise be able to do it. Well, here, Jay, let me tell you one of my favorite things about how to use the Waianae Public Library. All the libraries can be used like this, but Waianae so hot in the summertime, you bring your laptop to the nice air-conditioned library, you open up your laptop, you get your library card out, and you log into our Wi-Fi, our free Wi-Fi, and you oh. do your work from there. Oh, there God, you go. you're offering me such a track of questions here. I really <laughs> I love this conversation. Ah, Wi-Fi. Yes. Another really critical thing. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have to use the computers in the no, library. No, you can use your own. You may have a laptop. A lot of people have laptops. They sure. have laptops in schools. And they right. walk around with laptops all day. But mm -hmm. it's not all that good if you don't have Wi-Fi. So you're providing them Wi-Fi. This yeah, is absolutely. terrific. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that's a very, it's a service that's used a lot by a lot of different people. And, you know, even people that have computers at home, how many people come to the library and they say, oh, my printer just ran out of ink. So they come over to the library, they send the item to themselves in their email or they put it on their flash drive, they drive over to the library, they log onto the computer, they print their job and they're heading back home and they didn't have to go into town to buy new ink for mm -hmm. their printer. So That's great, great, great yeah. service, a great service. Boy, it, it's a, it's a magnet, you know, if people yeah. come in and be able to do it. It's enabling, enabling, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure is. So what about things that are kind of personal? I mean, for example, uh, I, go to, I go on a computer, I go on a browser, mm -hmm. your browser, and I, wanna, I go to my account. Mm -hmm. Say it's my financial account mm -hmm. or something that's personal. Mm -hmm. um, how do I protect myself? How do you protect me from, um, you know, nobody, nobody getting my passwords and the like? Yeah. Well, um, I don't know all the technical specifics, but I do know our system is very safe. And um, at the end of your session, if you turn the computer all the way off, everything is um, 
It, it, nothing gets saved it's to the gone. hard drive. It's gone. At the end, and if you don't do that, no worries, because at the end of the day, everything gets wiped out and you start fresh. So those people that sadly forgot their flash drive and they think it's going to be on the computer the next day, unfortunately it's not, but that's also fortunate because that means no one can look at their so stuff. So you give them access to put a flash drive in, to oh, yeah. put information mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. take it out. Yeah, so even our copiers now will, um, you can print from your flash drive in the copier. You can scan to your flash drive mm -hmm. from the copier, mm -hmm. which is a really great thing. Somebody says they want to fax something. We don't have faxing, but we tell them, print your document, sign it, scan it into a flash drive, and we'll let you borrow ours if you need to, and then go to the computer, get on your email, and send it. You know, this is a real, this is a, this is a good deed you're providing to the community. I wasn't aware of all these things. It's a mitzvah, as we say. And, um, you know, it, it just, uh, it, it also, it also reflects something about you as the manager and your staff. You're, you're out there to try to help people in every way you can possibly help them. Am I right? Tell me yeah. about the, the tone, the attitude, uh, you know, among the staff in the library. Well, I don't know about other libraries, but all I can speak to is Y and I, and we have absolutely the friendliest, nicest, most dedicated, helpful staff that I've ever worked with. And I've been in the library system for 20 years, and, and all the other people I've worked with are great too, but this particular group of people are pretty awesome, and mm -hmm. they know a lot of stuff too, mm -hmm. and so that makes it really fun. So what about, what about being a librarian? I mean, are you, um, why am I thinking of 76 trombones marrying a librarian? <laughs> yeah. Is it Cheryl li librarian? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you train for this? Did you go to school for this? Yeah, I went to UH. Um, when, um, back 20 years ago, I've always been a pretty passionate, avid reader. You know, 20 years ago, I took the TV away from my family for a year. Uh, they only let me do that for a year, but uh, <laughs> we all read. So... After that year was over, my husband told me, um, you have got to find some way to pay for this, you know, this hobby. So when I moved to Hawaii, I went to library school so that I could continue my passion for reading and sharing reading and, uh, and get paid for it. Was so, it a good choice? Oh, the best choice. Yeah. I can't tell you what, how much pleasure I get from sharing things that I've read in the library. We have a new... Thing at the library we put staff picks up in our staff name and we all wait every day to hope somebody picks our book you know it's fun it's fun yeah. you're beginning to get the idea <laughs> this is a special person a special yeah. branch and it's a you know it's, it's a it's a wonderful expression of uh, how the library system works in hawaii uh, it's part of the community and it's part of lifelong learning yeah. and i i was telling you before the show began you know when i went to school I always said, gee, I don't want any more of this. Uh, when I finish school and I get my necessary degrees, I'm out of here. I'm not going to go back to school ever. And I, and I really found that that was completely the wrong, the <laughs> wrong thought to have. Yeah. Because life must be uh, lifetime learning. Yes. You must learn all the time. And it doesn't matter what you study. You have to study anything that, that, yeah. that makes your consciousness grow. Yeah. And that's what you offer at the library system. People Absolutely. come in, they can do anything they want. Yeah. And it, it's an uh, intellectual experience yeah. for everyone, yeah? Yeah, and it's so much fun to see what our patrons request. So we get, when you go to the Waianae branch, uh, we have a, a collection. Uh, but when you look on the catalog, you have access to every book, every DVD, every CD in every library in all these 51 branches. And you can request it. It gets sent to my library. The staff checks it in, and we go, oh, wow, this looks interesting. And we put a hold on that one, too. Staff uh, learns, too. Yes, we do. We do all the time. It's fun. And we talk to our patrons about what they're reading and get suggestions from them, just as much as they get suggestions from us. But the beauty of a uh, one-system library system is that my unique little library that tries to collect to support my community is, is available to everybody and everybody else's is available to me or That's my great. community. That's great. How yeah. long does it take to move the, you know, the things I request from one place to another? Well, that's a little hard to say because some of them are coming from the neighbor islands. Oh, and, the neighbor islands, of oh, course. Yeah, yeah, Why didn't great. I think of that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And some of them, like for example, a man asked me two days ago, 
for a book and he was in a really big hurry. So I called the other library, said, is it on the shelf? Yes. Can you check it in, please? And I was keeping my fingers crossed and I looked through delivery today and it wasn't there. I was so disappointed. And then I turned around and looked. Oh, we got it yesterday. <laughs> So all the better. You beat your own expectations. Yes, it did. But it's hard because you never know. Because sometimes, like, we have something called hot picks. And before a book is even published, we call it pre-pub. We put it in our catalog. And people can put a hold on it. So all those people that were waiting for Michelle Obama's book, and it was out at the printer, we had copies. Now mm -hmm. there was a long hold. But, you know, eventually you're going to get it. But yeah, it's and great. your hot picks are on the web somewhere. Yes. How do uh -huh. I know what's there? Well, you can um, on the library system webpage, uh, which is libraryshawaii.org. That's where you can find everything. And um, you put me on the spot. I'm not exactly sure where the hot picks are, but if you search in the top right corner and say search the site and say hot picks, hot picks. it'll come up. And they have them all there. You can request them, and then um, you get get on the list and. And then they send you, and if you're smart and you put your email address on your library card application, they'll just send you an email. You know? Okay, we're going to talk about library cards right after this break. Cheryl Lynch, the branch manager of the Waianae Public Library. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan, the Energy Man at lunchtime at noon on my lunch hour we're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Okay, we're back. I told you we'd come back, and we did come back. And Cheryl Lynch is holding her, her uh, iPhone, and she wants to show you something on the iPhone. What, what are you trying to show us? Well, you were talking about library cards, and um, I wanted to show people our app. So we have an app, and it looks just like the library card if you have the red one. If you are lucky enough to still have your green one, you would still recognize the library logo, which is the red with the yellow hibiscus, and it's called libraryshawaii.org. Uh, that's our website, and our app is called Libraries Hawaii as well. And if you click on it, you can do all kinds of things. This little uh, uh, thing that looks like a barcode, if you click on that, um, you can scan a barcode for a book. So if you're in the library, I mean, excuse me, if you're in the bookstore and you wanna know if the library has it, you just you know click this and scan the barcode with a, like it uses the camera on your phone it tells you if you have it in the library or not and um and if you do you can put a hold on it right there i just scanned your books on the bookshelf because one look yeah one look you for, find anything well yeah to a couple of them that and i actually put a hold on one while i was sitting out there yeah and then also these little menu stripes up here um if you click on this you can load your account uh, information in here under the account you put your library card and your pin number and your library card is then on your phone and if you forget it at home no worries pull out your phone because no one leaves the house without their phone that's true well, not these they days. might leave without their library card but if they have it in here it even tell you uh, if you have something on hold if you have something overdue it'll tell you if you owe money and I do I owe money yeah I always owe money because I forget to bring my books back <laughs> so and even though my app tells me they're due today, but anyway, the, the library app is 
my absolute favorite thing. Yeah, uh, this is for the, the whole system, the whole system. All, all right. the branches. Mm -hmm. But how long has it existed? It sounds terrific. Um, maybe we've had it a couple, at least a couple years. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, so you download it from iPhone and yeah. Android also. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. this is great. Yeah. this is great. Yeah. Oh, can I tell you about another one too? Please. Okay. So we have something called I don't know if you could see this one. It's called Libby, and I have it up here. My my background on my phone, it makes it hard to see, but Libby right here is our provider for downloadable ebooks and audiobooks. <laughs> and Libby is so smart, she's my best friend, uh, because she will, um, you could search for things, there's all kinds of preferences, like you could put it, I only want audiobooks, I only want ebooks, and if I do check out an ebook, she's smart enough to know that I'm not going to read it on my phone, she sends it to my Kindle. Oh, very cool. I know, it's awesome. So... So what, what is the connection between Kindle and Amazon and your programs that you offer? Is it, is it the same thing, but the library system version? Uh, or is it connected in some way to, to Kindle? Well, in order for your Kindle uh, or your iPad or your iPhone or anything, um, when, you, when you go through Libby, which is the, it's, Libby actually belongs to OverDrive. And Libby is the new, uh, more user-friendly app that goes with overdrive and you can um because kindle is a proprietary for amazon you have to then go into your amazon account and you'll see your content you downloaded from the library system mm -hmm. and you just manage it there and once you do it a couple times it you're golden you, you know you know so how to you do can it. have them side by side with the books that you bought oh, from, yeah. from amazon yeah your because, library includes both sources well but when you use the libby app it doesn't Okay, you're only going to see what you have checked out from the library. Okay, okay. But if you look on your Amazon account, you'll see both. So you can yeah. see both. Yeah, you can, definitely can see both, yeah. yeah. This is really interesting because, you know, it bespeaks of um, a new kind of literacy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, my concern, I was telling you before the show, is that uh, to, to run a democracy, you need people who are an electorate who is uh, educated and able to make decisions about complex issues, sometimes with... Um, confusing facts and mm -hmm. and uh, disputed facts and mm -hmm. controversies all around. We see that mm -hmm. today, and you you need people to be educated not only in the in the CNN sense, mm -hmm. <laughs> but in the sense of reading, mm -hmm. in the sense of understanding the context, understanding the history, understanding the possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be thin. It can't be focused only on your shoelaces. It has to be based on lifelong learning that yeah. keeps on going. That puts mm -hmm. us all in the landscape. So the library is actually working on that. Mm -hmm. and, and you're offering literacy to people. And literacy mm -hmm. means much more than just reading books. It's a way of thinking. I can see it in you, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I just have to reassure you that Cedric Gates and uh, Mylesha Mabakura, our uh, legislators from YNI, are very familiar with the library. And we see them, and we see their family. And so I know they're in there reading, so that's great. But um, you were talking about literacy. One of the things that the library does, and most, most every library has something called story time. And YNI has two story times. We have something called family story time where we encourage reading as uh, we encourage uh, families uh, and preschoolers. And then we have toddler time, which is zero to three. And those two story times are... Um, Think of them as ways to help your child uh, get ready to learn. So when they go to school, they have been exposed to reading, they have been exposed to the, the joy of reading, and they will be more ready to learn when they go to school. Mm. Now, our toddler time, uh, our children's librarian uses the skills that she learned in a program called Every Child Ready to Read, and they teach specific skills. So when she has toddler time, and it's crazy. There's like 25 people in there. I was in there with her the other day, and it's so much fun. But she tells the parents or the caregivers why she's doing specific things. So that, like, for example, she gives them a little card to write on. And you're, you think giving a baby a card to write on to write their name? And she tells the parents, just let them scribble. Cause they'll, uh, so, and then she has a clapping game. And we say their name, and they put their name up on the board. She said it's a way to familiarize them with pre-learning, pre pre-reading skills. So she does all those things, and then she's teaching, she's exposing the children, and she's teaching the parents how to take it home. 
It's great. Yeah. It is. It's, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, because even if you scribble, you're, you're learning the relationship of something on the page, something yes. on the paper with, with, with communication. Yeah. The yeah. thought process, yeah. and, and that's a huge lesson for a kid. Yeah, and they scribble, and then everybody claps and says their name and claps for them, and they go up and they put a Yeah, so it's a lovely association. Don't you like when people clap for you? <laughs> you know, one, one, of our, uh, one of our hosts here, we have uh -huh. like 70 of them all together, but one of our hosts wrote a piece, an op-ed piece for the Star Advertiser, just submitted it, and I think it will be printed. And it's about the relationship of the electorate in education mm -hmm. and the press, mm -hmm. okay? The press the electorate, the education. And, and the idea is that to have a working democracy, you have got to have engagement. You've got to have people together who are willing to test their ideas. And I, and I have the vision is, uh, you know, when you went to library school and, and when you, mm, you know, talk with people who are reading, it's not only that they read, mm -hmm. they engage. Right. Uh, it, and so that, that interaction mm -hmm. makes you hone your opinions down. It makes you find the truth. Mm -hmm. It, it mm -hmm. tests you. Uh, yeah. and, and this kind of thing is, I mean, it's, it's basic in our country, mm -hmm. in our democracy. And, and you told me before that you have events. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that the events go beyond just literacy. The events go to engagement, too, where people yeah. actually have an opportunity to express themselves in a group. Am I right? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, well, still very tied to literacy, we want... Why and I and many of the libraries have a monthly book club. And last month, the book we read, um, I was the host, because at my library we change hosts every month. Um, the book that I picked, nobody liked. <laughs> so, and different people would tell me, oh, did you read that? I'm like, yeah. And so what, ha what I did was then I emailed all of them and I attached a bunch of reviews. Because this book had won the Pulitzer Prize and everyone was like, why did it win the Pulitzer Prize? This is terrible. So I attached a bunch of reviews. And then when we came to book club, I had more people there than I had at any other book club because nobody liked the book and wanted to figure out why, who on earth would like this. And we started discussing it. We talked about the reviews. It was a fantastic discussion. And I think a lot of people left and said, hmm, Maybe I'll read that again and yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. And next month Open we have... Open-mindedness, yes, critical thinking, all yeah, the good things. All the fun stuff. It was so much fun. And then um, next month we have the author coming, Rodney Morales' new book called For a Song. And it's set in the, in the early, I think, two, 2007. It's set in Hawaii. And the funny thing is, is when you read the description of the book, you can read it on the website under book clubs if you search for it. <laughs> it sounds just like it came out of the newspaper today. Yeah. So I can't wait till he comes and Relevance. we can talk about it. Yeah, it's so fun. So I have to ask you as a librarian, as the mm -hmm. manager of this library these days, mm -hmm. what are you reading, Cheryl? Give me the book that, that appeals to you right now. Okay, well, I must say I usually read three or four because I listen to one that I'm not really liking right now, but that's okay. I just finished a an audio, an audio, an audio book, book that okay. I downloaded from the library. Okay. And um, I'm reading a book called uh, The Museum of Modern Love. It's very unique. Um, I think Heather Rose is the author. And it's a, it's a fiction book about a real artist. It's very interesting, because art is not something I'm familiar with, so I've learned a ton from this fiction. And then I just read a book called um, Thirst. It's written by a guy named Scott Harrison, and it's about his startup called Charity Water. It's a huge thing, and but it's so personable and so engaging. I really enjoyed reading that and learned about that water charity. But our children's librarian uh, works on the Nene Committee. Do you know what the Nene is? It's I the know the goose. It, yeah, well, <laughs> it's named after the goose. It's the state award for children's book, children's fiction book. It's been going on since 1959, sure, yeah. and she's on the committee to, to pick, help pick the titles for the kids to vote on. Well, she's got so much to do doing toddler time, story time, and all the great programs she does that the staff volunteered to help her read the books. Oh my gosh, has it been so much fun. We're reading all these books that are designed for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, and then we all talk about them. And then she gives us all a piece of paper. We got to fill it out like we're in school and say what we liked, what we didn't like. So I've read a read a, a lot of really cute books. That way, you learn so much more about the book. 
Oh yeah, and when you learn so much more in general, and you mm -hmm. never forget the learning experience yeah. about the book. True. So uh, take one minute now, Cheryl, and tell the people what you would like them to take away from this discussion about uh, the, the Hawaii Library System and about Waianae. Okay. Well, if you haven't been to the Waianae Library in a while, please come back. You probably won't recognize it when you come inside. We look a lot different. Um, the library is the library system is available to people in many forms, whether it's online or whether it's downloadable to your device or you've come in for a program, you just come in to enjoy the air conditioning and we have the coldest water fountain on the west side. Um, there's lots of reasons to come to the library, whether it's my library or any library. So please come back and see us. I think you'll find that there's something for everybody there. Yeah. And, and if you want to succeed in this life, in this world, you got to know things. The way to know things is to read things, because that helps you speak things. And um, it's not only for your benefit, it's for all of our benefit to raise all the boats that we all have lifelong learning. Yes. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Great My to pleasure. Be here. Aloha.